So here's some dope shit. So you can go into toolbox and add individual configurations and remove them. Uh, individual configurations or stuff like this advanced ICF, which gives you 2D maps. Um, this traction ICF or traction control, which you have to buy, uh, drive by wire, inputs, outputs. These are all things you can add in. I'm going to actually remove the traction control add in just to show you. So your traction control is gone now. So I have in my inputs and outputs. I have vehicle speed, which is going to be your drive shaft. This is going to be connected to your um, VSS that's in the transmission. And you go in here and you configure it. And basically, I have you know average four pulses, forty pulses per revolution. This is going to be um, how many teeth are basically on your reluctor wheel. The gear ratio of the diff. Um, because I'm measuring the drive shaft, so it does spin 3.73 times in this case faster than the wheels do. And the wheels are 26 inches in this example. So once you get that done, this can use the computer can use this information to calculate how fast the vehicle is moving in miles per hour up here. So now that I've got the vehicle set up, <clears throat> I've got my front wheel speed sensors. Um, I'll configure those, come in and I'm going to average four pulses. I'm going to just say that these are 17 teeth per wheel. And because it's directly on the wheel, I've got a gear ratio of one because there's no gear reduction or anything. This is directly off the wheel and same 26 inch wheel. So I, I can even change this too. If you wanted to, you can change this to like five and we can stick a sensor on the back of the wheel studs and just measure the five wheel studs that are on the back of it. doesn't matter as long as this matches how many teeth you have on the wheel that's being triggered. Um, it'll be accurate. So now we got our input set up. So now that I have my inputs, I have two different speeds. I can compare the two and see, I can compare the two and see what, um, I can calculate basically wheel slip at this point. So I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to go 1D tables. Actually, no, I take that back. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to make an output. In here, I'm going to set up an output. I'm going to name it wheel slip percentage. And I'm going to set it up as a pulse width modulated output. It doesn't really matter if it's positive or negative. We just need a PWM. Um, and then I'll go over here to configure. And in here, I just have it set up so it's only going to be active when the front wheel speed is above five miles an hour because we really don't need it above five or below five miles an hour. And, it, you know, just to keep it from tripping out and maybe, you know, causing a bunch of problems, I'm going to set it to where it's not going to be active until after the vehicle is moving at least five miles an hour. And this is off the front wheel speed. So um, you actually have to be moving five miles an hour for this to work. Um, benefit to this is if the front wheels never go over five miles an hour, you can sit there and do standing burnouts and it doesn't care. It's just going to let their, I mean, you don't have to turn tra traction control off. You can just do standing burnouts all you want. The minute you get off the brake and it starts going five miles an hour, traction control will start kicking in. Um, so anyways, I'm making a, I'm calculating how much wheel slip. So I need to start looking at front wheel speed versus rear wheel speed. And here's a graph I put together. Um, we're basically looking at a fixed pulse width frequency of 150 Hertz. doesn't really matter what this is set to because none of this is relevant. We're not controlling anything with this. This is just going to be a percentage number that we're generating in duty cycle. And this percentage is important because we're going to use this as an input for another table. So now that I have this kind of configured up, I'm going to set the X axis as my vehicle speed. And I'm going to set the Y axis as my front wheel speed. So vehicle speed is the driven wheels. Front wheel speed is the wheels obviously in the front of the car. So now we're looking at it and I basically took all of this and I imported it into, uh, I, I actually copied these rows and columns into Excel and I did some basic math um, to basically calculate, you know, how much wheel slip is it if the wheel is going 143 miles an hour in the back and I don't know. Uh, 140 miles an hour in the in the uh, front. There's this two two 2.1 percent slip. So, kind of get an idea of how that works. 
So I take all of this, I can copy all of it, and I'll come right over here and paste it right into Holly. Holly will take it, it doesn't care. Um, it knows what a cell is, it'll put that data right where it needs to go. Um, and then right here you can see my graph where I can calculate you know, how much slip is being generated between the front wheel speed and the rear wheel speed. And what happens now is this is actually, as far as the computer is concerned, we're looking at duty cycle right here. So this is generating a duty cycle output that I can use for another input. So once we calculate how much wheel slip we have in this graph, this will generate a PWM output that's not assigned to a pin, it's just data at this point. So now that I have that, I can come up here to the top and I can go to my advanced ICF. And here I can generate a 1D table. And we're gonna look at table number one. This right here is drive-by wire wheel slip. And you can name this whatever you want, but I figured this is the most fitting name for it. Um, the table type is going to be drive-by wire offset. Assuming that you bought a dominator and you're fly-by-wire, you can set this up to offset percentage-wise how much of your drive-by-wire input is offset by this table. Um, what that means is if you have something in here where we're looking at uh, drive-by-wire offset on the left over here and wheel slip on the bottom on the right or on the bottom as wheel slip increases, we can go down here, and this is the input that we generated, by the way. This is, you know, we're looking at 0% wheel slip to 20% wheel slip. And as wheel slip increases, we can go over here and we can say, hey, you know, the wheels are spinning. We want to try and target about 5%. If it's spinning about 5%, we'll pull 10% of the drive-by wire uh, input out of it. So if you're 50%, and you've got 5% wheel slip, it's gonna pull 10% of your throttle out, and now you have 40% throttle instead of 50% throttle, even though you're commanding it. And what this does is, uh, the more wheel slip you have, the more aggressive you can get into it to try and back this down and find a happy balance. And this takes a little toying, you have to go in and do a little trial and error, because um, there's nothing, nothing absolute here. Um, you can get real aggressive with this, um, and have like nothing pulled out and then pull a bunch out like um, almost immediately um, But you can run into a situation where It's kind of uh, that really annoying taxi driver where it's all or nothing where it's all gas or all brakes um, If you kind of get in there and get kind of aggressive, but still have some linearity to it. It gets progressively more aggressive as wheel slip goes up so hopefully you can try and catch it and slow it down and it'll kind of hover around here somewhere ideally. Um, but you know, it's all trial and error and you can play with it, but this gives you the tools you need to be able to pull throttle out to control wheel slip. So now we can go over here and we can look at this table over here, table number two. Maybe you want to use a little bit of spark. So slip percentage versus spark. And what we're doing here is we're doing timing offset and Right here on the left side, you can see timing offset. On the bottom, it says wheel slip. So from zero to 20% wheel slip, if it's over 5%, because you're trying to target 5%, anything over 5%, we'll start pulling you know, a degree, three degrees, four, six, nine, 10 degrees, start pulling some timing out of it to try and get, you know, try and reduce the horsepower this thing's making so it tries to you know back off on the wheel slip a little bit. Um, and I mean, you can, you can change this to, advanced tables and you can set it to where you know the wheel slip has to be over a certain percentage you can set it to uh, a certain speed you know you have to go over a certain speed in order to enable it um, there's a bunch of different ways you can set this up it's pretty unlimited there's another one I set up here just as a demo this is uh, hardline this is slip percentage versus rev limiter um, in this one what we're gonna do is uh, I have it set up right now for advanced enable. If the wheel slip is above 20%, this goes active. And this is like last ditch effort. Let's say you're making way the hell too much horsepower and you really want to make this thing stop hard line. Um, I have it set up right now to assuming that we have like a 6,500 RPM rev limiter in this thing and you would have to rescale this if you change your rev limiter. But assuming you have a 6,500 RPM rev limiter, 
If you're spinning at 4,300 RPM and you've got more than 20% wheel slip, this thing's going to reduce the rev limiter of 6,500 to 22. It's going to pull it down 2,200 RPM, which will target 4,300 RPM. So it will just not rev anymore if you go over 20%. It'll just stop. Two step, bop, 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 whatever your, or you know, if it's a fuel cut, whatever, whatever rev limiter you have set up, this is going to activate that rev limiter right at the RPM that it starts triggering 20%. Hard line in the sand, don't go, don't collect $200. So, those are several different ways that you can control wheel slip without using the traction control ICF. And the only input you're using is just one for the front wheel speed. Um, I don't know why people pay for this shit. You can do it inside the Holly pretty easily. Um, yeah, hope this gives you some ideas of how you can program and set your car up for wheel slip or, you know, anything really. Um, I'll work on another one for pit row, something that you can uh, use as a speed limiter for pit row. Um, and uh, I'll get a video for that one.